I remember as a really young girl, a buddy of mine, Mario, he was so rad, a very talented guy, he's still a friend of mine, and we were in school, and he said, so, you know, what do you visualize? What do you see yourself doing? And all I visualized was me sitting behind a mic, playing a piano in a little dive jazz club, and being a real old woman and having a cigarette, and <laughs> smoking a cigarette and singing. And so that did it for me. That, that was the fulfilling dream to me because it wasn't based on the level or money or however many people come to see you. It was based on not quitting and getting to be an old mother fricka, still doing one of the many things about being alive that I love. And one of those things is, is singing and making music. So I started writing way before I started singing. My first recital as a little kid, my sister Sharon brought me up to the piano at Mrs. Davis's house where she'd have her recitals every year. And that was the first year I started working with Miss Davis and I was four. And I, I'd written some music on piano. And she said, okay, instead of playing that song, uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb, which, you know, boring, why don't you just play a little thing that you came up with? I don't write it, it writes me. You know, I'm seeking out for some kind of guidance and answer. And there's something about songwriting that it really does write you, it shows you the way, you know. And if I try and use my big fat ego to show it the way, it's always something crap or lackluster or some kind of denial hiding. But if I am willing to let that go and just go with wherever it takes me, um, I find that it, it gets closer to the truth and really is a great tool for healing. The list of what there is to be grateful for and happy for is so much longer than what there is to be sad and brokenhearted over. But I think that sometimes it's easier to believe the lie. You know, misery loves company. My darkest time was really in my late 20s where I really don't think I had any hope left. And I was just too chicken to take myself out. I had these really false attempts at killing myself, but if I really wanted to, I would have. Um, and I think that it was Scott, my husband, um, who I don't know why, I mean really, even know if he knows why, he stayed in there. He says that he knew there was something in me that, um, wasn't completely gone and that he, he had seen her once and he was waiting to see her again and even if it meant he'd wait forever, he'd wait forever. I think part of what's great about being alive, whether you're an artist or not, is embracing the fact that this thing is supposed to take you up and down. It's supposed to get you lost and give you moments of thinking you found. But it's a beautiful ride, especially when you let it take you. I've never felt like I can sing like my heroes, and to me, my heroes really can sing. But um, I just like the way it feels more than the way it sounds, if that makes any sense. It's almost like I could compare it to crying or screaming at somebody. It's you're, if you're angry and you're raising your voice, you feel like you're getting it off your chest. And, and if you're sad and you're crying, you feel like you're getting it off your chest. And I feel that way with singing, like I'm just getting off my emotions off my chest, and I like the way it feels. The great joy is just having something in life that you wake up to and you can't wait to start doing it that day. That, it doesn't get better than that. That's the success, is doing that which brings you joy.